Inside Parliament with Montague. With support from the Houses of Parliament. Hello. Fancy a peek inside the House of Lords chamber? There's a big debate tonight. Could be an all-nighter. Let's go. The House of Lords is a really important part of the democratic process. That's making sure things are fair. The Lords have three important jobs. The first one is to check and challenge the government. Do you know in the last parliamentary session, the Lords asked the government over 18,000 questions? And the government had to answer them all. <laughs> the second job is to shape the laws. The government might like to just pass new laws whenever it liked, but that's not how it works. Potential laws, or bills, can begin in the Commons. They then go to the Lords, where they are read, debated, changes are made, and loopholes are plugged. And even then they might have a few more questions for the government to answer. Hey, oh, we nearly got spotted by a cleaner there. Diversion needed. The third job is to investigate issues through committees and debates to help improve the way the country is run. Because of their knowledge and experience, Lords can really help Parliament get to grips with all sorts of complicated subjects, from nursing to nanotechnology. Brilliant! We've popped up in the peers lobby. Just next to the chamber, there's lots of decoration and red, and everywhere you look around here, there are reminders of important events and people from history. Hey, let's take a peek back in time. That way, you can see where the House of Lords came from. The Lords started as a kind of advisory council for the King. They met up in Westminster every now and then to discuss matters of state. In 1215, King John was forced to sign the Magna Carta, which required him to share power to the nobility, so they could have more of a say in the way things were done. As time went on, trade became more important, leading to rise of new merchant class. And they wanted a say too. Edward III divided Parliament into two houses, with the nobles in one, and less important knights and merchants in the other. And from then on, the Commons became more dominant. King Charles I was even executed by the Commons in 1649. The Commons is definitely in charge today. These days you have to be appointed to the Lords. That means chosen. And you have to have experience and knowledge to share. Right, let's go through the famous brass gate and into the chamber. No one's looking! Made it! Here we are in the big House of Lords chamber. The chamber is where lots of the work takes place. And the red leather benches are where the members of the Lords sit. And I can tell you, it can be quite a squash and a squeeze on busy days because there are around 800 Lords. But there's only room for about 230 at a push. <laughs> so who decides who sits where? Well, they don't have a game of musical chairs. <laughs> where they sit depends on which party or group they belong to. And before you say it, I don't mean the sort of party where you get balloons and ice cream. Political parties are groups of people who have similar views on how the country should be run. Lords, who are part of the same political party as the government, sit over here on the left. The ones opposite, well, they're called the opposition. Those who don't support any political party or set of views are called crossbenchers, and they sit in the benches that go across the chamber. There's also a special area for the 26th Church of England Archbishops and Bishops, who sit in the Lords. Crossbenches and all those other strange words might seem complicated, but they're talking about normal people. Lords come from all walks of life. Businessmen, politicians, doctors, nurses, soldiers, technology experts, writers, postmen, lawyers, judges and policemen, all helping to shape and change laws. You don't get many gargoyles, generally speaking, though. Just me today. <laughs> hey, oh, see that lady over there? She's the Lord Speaker. And see that big red seat she sat on in the middle of the room? That's called the Woolsack. I wonder if you can guess what it's stuffed with. OK, that was a bit easy. Wool's been an important part of the British economy for centuries. And the Woolsack is a reminder of that. Doesn't look very comfortable, but then I prefer the rafters in Westminster Hall myself. Anyway... The benches and the woolsack aren't the only seats in the chamber. There's one more seat behind the woolsack right at the back, and you can't miss it. 
It's fit for a king. Or should I say queen? Perfect. We're nice and close. This is one of the most incredible sights in the whole building. The monarch's throne. If you imagine you were going to draw the best throne ever, you'd draw lots of gold and decorations, wouldn't you? Well, that might come close to the throne in here. It's dazzling. Her Majesty sits on the throne when she comes for the ceremonial opening of a new parliamentary session. Usually once every year, but not always. But that's the only time it gets sat upon. The Queen doesn't take part in what goes on here. Let's get back. I think the debate is coming to a close. And it looks like they're recording this debate with those TV cameras on the walls and the microphones hanging from the ceiling. That means it'll be on telly. You can check out what's going online too. And there's even blogs and tweets about all the goings on. That's all handy for people at home, but I don't want to be tweeted about, so let's shift. Now, as fun as it is to have a good old discussion on what should be in a new law, it's no good unless you can resolve disagreements. And in the Lords, this is done by coming to a decision, which sometimes needs a vote. Although, it's called a division here. Look and you'll see why. The Lords who agree with what's being debated go into the corridor called the Content Lobby. That's over there on that side of the chamber. Those who don't agree go to the Not Content Lobby. Over here. Clerks, staff who support the work in the chamber, count the number of Lords in each lobby. The results are checked by a teller and given to the Lord Speaker, who announces the result with no argument over who's won. Easy! Well, it's time for me to go. The last thing these busy members of the Lords need to see is a talking gargoyle. <laughs> Pop in again soon, though, because there's stacks more to show you inside Parliament. And remember to check out my carvings on the Fun Kids website. Well, I am made from stone and can't hold a pen. Inside Parliament with Montague the Gargoyle. With support from the Houses of Parliament. Find out more about the House of Lords online at www.parliament.uk forward slash lords.